Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. If you've ever watched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, or its more recent reboot, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, one of the standout scenes is the Candy Garden featuring the Chocolate River. It's one of those places that stimulates the imagination, no matter how ridiculous the idea may be. I'm sure we've all played with the idea of this coming to fruition as an actual theme park attraction. While the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium at Universal seems like a missed opportunity because it's just simply a restaurant, I was surprised to find out that a Willy Wonka ride did actually exist. From 2006 to 2015, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory The Ride would run at Alton Towers. I'm sure that there are people out there with fond memories for this attraction, but it just doesn't seem particularly compelling to me. As the third re-theme of an attraction originally known as Around the World in 80 Days, which opened in 1982, the content of the ride itself is clearly limited by the building and ride track. It lacks the ambitious scale and scope that you would really want with a ride like this, and so it's a bit of a disappointment. On the topic of Chocolate Factory tours though, there is something out there that isn't at all like a Willy Wonka ride, but is quite interesting and unique. Today, I would like to instead take a look at a strange dark ride located in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Taking you through an educational tour of a chocolate factory, with the ride essentially existing to advertise their products, Hershey's Chocolate Tour is quite the unique attraction, something that seems right at home in a dystopian novel. Hershey Chocolate, Hershey Chocolate, it's a Hershey Chocolate World. Wherever you go, It's that time again to remind people to go ahead and hit the like button. As always, I find that just asking people to do so helps my videos do a lot better, so if you're interested in more videos like these, it's a quick thing you can do to help them out. When you think of company towns, you probably have a poor association with them, as exploitative places filled with workers who are trapped by slave wages. Outside of Hershey Park today is the town of Hershey, founded as a company town in 1903 by Milton Hershey himself. Seen as the perfect spot for its steady supply of cow's milk and abundance of hard-working German immigrants, Hershey's chocolate business quickly grew, and the town would expand along with it. While not without its issues, Hershey as a company town was regarded much better than many of its American and European equivalents for its high wages and excellent standard of living and community care. Today, one of the defining features here are the streetlights shaped like Hershey Kisses. The town is of course also known for Hershey Park, as well as an exhibit known as the Hershey Story, the museum on Chocolate Avenue. Having started in 1933 as the Hershey American Indian Museum and displaying elements of Native American culture, the museum would expand its collection with artifacts from German Pennsylvanian culture two years later. However, in 2009, the museum would move to a new building, and while the original pieces would be preserved there, they would not be viewable to visitors. This new version of the museum instead focuses on the life of Milton Hershey, and covers the chocolate making process. Prior to the museum though, Hershey had been giving tours of the chocolate factory since 1910, and while that tour would evolve over the years, it eventually reached the point where demand far exceeded capacity. As a solution, the tour ended in 1973, as Hershey opened Hershey's Chocolate World, which would take inspiration from pavilions at World's Fairs. Inside, it would be themed to a village where cocoa beans were farmed, and visitors could purchase various treats that incorporated Hershey's Chocolate. However, like many World's Fair pavilions, it included an educational Omnimover dark ride that taught visitors about their products. The ride would start by introducing visitors to the cocoa bean, explaining that the seeds inside would eventually become chocolate, and that the cacao plant is grown in warm, tropical environments throughout the globe. The scene then transitions to a jungle and from there a plantation, explaining how workers in Africa harvest the cocoa beans. 
Interesting to note is that this is clearly not Africa, as there is what I believe to be an Aztec temple in the background, as well as workers dressed in clothing that I believe is traditional in South American countries. From here, riders move past a ship where workers are loading the cocoa beans, where it is stated that they are shipped worldwide. Next, the importance of dairy cows to the chocolate making process is explained as riders move past American farms. It's a bit difficult to see, but the ride then travels past a model of the Hershey factory as the narrator explains how these products come together to create iconic Hershey chocolate. The ride then transitions into a factory portion that teaches more specific information about how the process works, which we'll cover later as this has largely remained unchanged throughout the decades. Finally, the ride ends with a scene known as the Test Kitchen, in which a static mannequin explains how nutritious Hershey chocolate is incorporated into a number of different products. Well, hello. Welcome to our test kitchens, where we try out many new recipes combining chocolate and cocoa with other wholesome ingredients, and formulate new products that add to your enjoyment and improve nutrition. The ride then transitions into advertising various Hershey products, with the narrator emphasizing how these contain essential nutrients and are part of any balanced American diet. The guests are then treated to a Hershey chocolate song, as flashing pictures show people eating and sharing their products before the ride ends. The ride would be updated numerous times, but only the beginning and ending scenes would ever really be changed. For example, a video from 1995 shows that the initial intro was replaced with just a model of the Hershey Chocolate Factory, and the ending was changed a bit as well, though playing the same Hershey Chocolate song, and the ride still emphasizing that Hershey's products were nutritious. A later video from 2004 shows that the initial design of the factory at the beginning had changed, and the narration seems to have dropped the idea that Hershey products were good for you to consume, instead focusing on the quality of the product as a treat. The ending would change as well, emphasizing how Hershey is a global company, and advertising how there are many other recognizable brands under the Hershey banner. From here, an updated version of the Hershey Chocolate Song would conclude the ride. While the original opening scene of the ride was much longer, it's understandable why it was eventually removed as Hershey, among other chocolate companies, has largely been unable to verify for decades that the cocoa beans they're importing haven't been harvested through child labor, especially in the Ivory Coast. Also important to note is that Hershey eventually dropped the pretense that Hershey's chocolate was nutritious, and while I didn't discern if it was ever labeled as healthy, that was certainly implied in those earlier versions. As you can see, Hershey's chocolate tour was interesting, but reflected negative aspects of the company. Still, this strange, propagandistic ride is still available today for free to any visitors of Hershey's Chocolate World. Let's then take a look at its most recent update and take the tour through the Hershey factory. Having been updated most recently in 2016, you enter a lightly themed queue that provides a bit of exposition on both Milton Hershey and the chocolate making process. Riders board their vehicles from a turntable and will make their way to the first scene, which takes place on a dairy farm. They'll meet the first cow, appropriately named Dairy, who will welcome them as they turn the corner. From here, you'll watch a scene where the dairy cows are joined by a few other barnyard animals as they sing a catchy song about how their milk is at the heart of Hershey chocolate. Next, riders will enter the Hershey Chocolate Factory in its most updated form. 
While many scenes have been modified, replaced, or enhanced with new technology over the years, the fundamental content of this portion has pretty much stayed the same since 1973. A guide appears on screen, introducing you first to the screening process, explaining that the beans are sifted through cleaning machines to remove unwanted material like pulp and bits of cacao pod. Next, you'll move on to bean blending, where you'll learn that different beans from around the world are mixed in just the right way to achieve the signature Hershey flavor. The next part of the process brings you to the roasting tunnel, where it simulates the cylindrical machines heating the beans with a sensory heat effect. Emerging, the tour now covers the breaking process, where beans are broken apart and then transferred to milling machines. The icon for Hershey chocolate bars, whose name is just simply Hershey's, explains that the milling process grinds the beans down into an unsweetened liquid form. Next, the pressing machine squeezes the liquid down into discs of cocoa powder, and a byproduct of cocoa butter is also created, being used later in the process. Moving to a different element, milk is being shown delivered to the factory, processed, and then pasteurized. Sugar is then later added. The next step of the chocolate making process is then blending the sweetened milk with the liquid chocolate. As this cooks, it creates small little chocolate pieces known as chocolate crumb. Machines then dry out the chocolate crumb until it becomes a powder and the cocoa butter is added back in along with a small bit of vanilla as well. The chocolate crumb is then refined, being put through steel rollers that grind it until it reaches a smooth consistency. It's also worth noting that this section uses a chocolate smell aimed at the ride vehicles to create a sensory experience. The chocolate crumb is then fed into conching machines, and in the next scene, Kisses explains how the crumb is then smoothed over into milk chocolate. This then moves onto the tempering process, where the chocolate is heated and cooled to create the right consistency. This is also poured into molds, and other ingredients such as almonds are added, depending on the product. Once this process finishes, the chocolate is then sent through cooling tunnels that solidify it into its final form, where it is then packaged. As the educational part of the tour concludes, you'll encounter the characters of Hershey's, Reese's, and Kisses as their products move along packaging lines overhead. Now granted, the characters aren't as creepy as you would think, but I kinda wish that they were, just to make things a bit more interesting. I do like when dark rides aren't afraid to be weird. The ride then ends by taking your photo and bringing you through an ending where it again shows you pictures of people enjoying Hershey's products. While many of the dystopian and problematic portions of the ride have been erased, trying to sell chocolate as a nutritional must but built on the backs of underpaid workers and children working in horrible conditions, it still seems a bit... disingenuous? It rides a fine line between being educational, which is certainly interesting, but also tries to sell you on a heartwarming product that is mass-produced on an assembly line. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy Hershey chocolates, but I don't need the false sentimentality of the products bringing people together. It's fun, but it's also just a very standard product that isn't particularly life-changing. Once the ride concludes, it dumps everyone back into the main building, and from here there are some more interesting elements worth checking out. While the chocolate tour is obviously the main attraction for Hershey's Chocolate World, this area offers a number of other smaller attractions as well. For example, you can pay about $30 to create your own chocolate bar, which is around a 45 minute experience. Something similar would be Stuff Your Cup, where you throw whatever you want into a giant Reese's cup for about $20. There is also the $18 Hershey Trolley Works, which takes you on a tour of the town where a guide points out historic buildings and places that are essential to its story and development. There's a variety of other things to do as well, such as a 4D theater experience, 
visiting various eateries that incorporate Hershey's sweets, and meet and greets with the various costume characters representing different candy products. There are also a number of novelty souvenirs sold throughout the space, ranging from oversized candy to plushes of popular products. You can, of course, also visit Hershey Park itself, which is essentially just across the parking lot, though I did want to avoid that for this video because I wanted to explore this strange but unique dark ride. In my opinion, while the current iteration is still interesting, I was hoping that it would stand out a bit more and not be afraid to be weirder like its earlier versions. Like I said, this ride had that weird dystopian tone of corporate product worship, showing the workers laboring in the plantation and insisting that Hershey chocolates was a nutritious product that you needed to have in your life as a citizen in a civilized society. This is one of the rides I vaguely remembered from my childhood, probably the 2004 version, but I did think it was interesting to see how it developed throughout the decades to fit contemporary audiences. As a reminder, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to go ahead and hit the like button. I also highly recommend subscribing and hitting the bell icon as well, so as to be notified when new videos are released. She